So now we want to make the connection with thermodynamics. Although the first connection that we made with thermodynamics was with the expression minus kb sum over pj ln pj as the entropy because this has all the properties of the entropy that we encountered in thermodynamics. It's an additive quantity which means it's an extensive quantity, it's a monotonic function so everything is satisfied just as we uh, just as we had seen in uh, thermodynamics. right? Now the first law of thermodynamics is the zeroth law and we have seen what the zeroth law essentially tells you that it brings in the concept of a temperature. right? So let's bring two microcanonical systems together. Systems together so that one of them have the energy E1 and the other one has the energy E2. When you bring these two together, the total energy becomes E1 plus E2, right? And you do the interaction between the parts so that the microstates becomes x1n outer product x2n. Okay? Your density rho of xn is 1 over omega times e, where omega of e is now has to be carefully defined is essentially integral d of xn delta of h in xn minus e and the Hamiltonian given these two energies the Hamiltonian of the system is combined system is x1n plus hn x2n correct so this becomes so let us rewrite this carefully. This is dx1n dx2n delta of hn xn minus e. Right? Good. So now I let us recast this equation as dx1n dx2n delta of h in x n minus e delta of h 1 n x n minus e 1. These two, the left and the right hand sides are identical. There is no difference in that. Right? But the moment you bring this, one also has to write down this carefully. The moment you introduce this, I can equivalently delta of H2 n xn minus E plus E1 delta of H1 n x1 n minus E1. So that the integral over E1 will bring in the uh, using the delta function, if you know integrate over e1, this e1 is going to be replaced by this. So this clearly tells you that this is dx1n delta of h1 x1 n minus e1 dx2n delta of h2 n xn x2n minus e minus e1. And you quickly identify this to be dE1 omega E1 times omega E minus E1, right? So you bring two microsystem, microcanonical systems together, each had energy, one had energy E1 and then one had energy E2, and then you bring them together. So this is the total number of microstates for the joint system. So omega e is integral d e1, this has to be omega 1 e1, this has to be omega 2 e minus e1, right? But omega 1 e1 
from the definition of entropy is S over Kb. So this is S1 E1 over Kb plus S2 E minus E1 over Kb. Correct? Now, entropy is an extensive drop quantity. Right? So, therefore, since S, this would mean that S1 is proportional to N1 and S2 is proportional to N2 with the understanding that both N1 and N2 are very large. Consequently, with this, since this term scales with N1, this term scales with N2, this argument of the exponential is very, very large. And I can evaluate this integral using a saddle point method at the extremum point of this expression. And suppose I do that, and this gives me two energies, E1 star and E2 star, which means what is being said here is that if once I bring the two systems, microcanonical systems together, they find a joint equilibrium by extremizing this quantity. Correct? How will you extremize? Well, del S1, del E1, plus del S2 del E1 is equal to 0, right? So, which means del S1 del E1 plus del S2 del E2 del E2 del E1 is equal to 0. This is the saddle point you are trying to determine E1 and E2 star. But E1 plus E2 is the total energy E and therefore del E2 del E1 is equal to 1 plus del E2 del E1 is 0 which means del E2 del E1 is minus 1 and therefore you have del S1 del E1 at E1 star is equal to del S2 del E2 at E2 star. This effectively tells you that when the two microcanonical systems are being brought together and they go into a joint equilibrium and that joint equilibrium happens by extremizing this expression, the entropy, which gives you E1 star, E2 star and this condition is satisfied. And this from thermodynamics, we know that is the inverse of the temperature. So, the joint equilibrium, when they come to a joint equilibrium, there is a thermodynamic property which becomes equal for both of them. And this is essentially the sense of the zeroth law that if A and B are brought together, the B and C are brought together, then are in equilibrium, then A and C also are in equilibrium. So, therefore, we see that. Essential, as we saw in the thermodynamics, that the essence of the zeroth law was that it tells you that there is a common thermodynamic state function when all the systems are in joint, joint equilibrium, and this is exactly also what we find out. So, we bring the two microcanonical systems together, bring them to a joint equilibrium, and we see that these two derivatives must equi be equal at the joint equilibrium at these energies E1 and E2 star. And these two are essentially 1 by is the inverse of the temperature. Further, note that since we have evaluated this integral that we have written down over here using the saddle point, our omega e, oops, 
omega e is approximately e to the power s of e1 star over kb plus s of e2 star over kb so that the entropy of the total system is approximately s of e1 star plus s of e2 star this expression can be derived can you can arrive at this expression if you just take a log of this equation <coughs> now the above definition of equilibrium of joint equilibrium essentially rests on the fact that there is a large degrees of freedom freedom and much much larger than one that makes it exponentially unlikely that the component energies of the system is anything other than e1 and e2 star which deceptively means that the equilibrium point is such that a larger number of accessible states are contain have the energies e1 star and e2 star than any other energies so essentially one can write down e1 star comma x1 so i'm replacing the generalized coordinates the v and the n by uh, x1 by the generalized coordinates x much much larger than omega e1 x1 we have to be careful with the notation so omega 1 omega 2 now this effectively means that delta s is s1 e1 star plus s2 e2 star and the x1 is also there comma x1 comma x2 minus s1 e1 x1 minus s2 e2 x2 is greater than or equal to zero this expression you arrive at by taking a log of this above equation <coughs> therefore you have delta s is greater than or equal to zero so that there is an irreversible flow of energy now i can write down delta s when the two microcanonical systems were brought together without any work being done then i can write down then the equilibrium condition t1 equal to t2 equal to t is not satisfied and therefore my delta s is del s e1 minus del s2 e2 times delta e1 is greater than zero and this essentially means that 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 delta e1 is greater than or equal to zero that essentially tells you that the heat flows from a hotter to a colder body which is your Clausius's theorem now finally we want to allow a variation in s of e comma x by changing the coordinates from x to x plus delta x so that the work done d cut w is f dot delta x this is the generalized force as you are well aware of the description the language that we used when we did thermodynamics right in which case your delta s is s of e plus f dot delta x x plus delta x minus s of e comma x so this is equal to del s del e f dot delta x because this amount of work changes the energy from e to e plus f dot 
delta x right plus del s del x which is del s del e f plus del s del x dotted with delta x which we have just now seen that del s del e is equal to 1 by t is f by t plus del s del x dot right now therefore look at this expression of delta s a spontaneous change is going to occur if this expression in the bracket is non-zero right so in order that at you are at equilibrium therefore there is no spontaneous change delta s is zero would mean that fi over t a minus is del s del x psi with e and xj being held constant so we have now identified the derivatives of s del s del e at x held was 1 over t which we saw in the zeroth law and this is the one we see that if we allow any variation in the coordinates <coughs> then my delta s is going to be like this but since it's an equilibrium it's a joint equilibrium the delta s has to be zero otherwise you are allowing a spontaneous change <coughs> so, and therefore your ds is since you know the variation from e this is de by t minus f dot dx by t and you arrive at the first law which tells you that tds is de minus f dot dx right so in summary <coughs> we started off with a probability density which we said was 1 over omega e comma x where this we said is the number of microstates the total number of microstates <clears throat> and using this de definition of rho using this expression for rho we constructed the entropy as minus kb dxn rho xn ln rho xn divided by cn so that substituting for this this becomes kb ln omega e comma x divided by cn and we further showed that the connection this is really the entropy that we worked with or that we can link with the entropy that we had defined in thermodynamics in thermodynamics we have defined just the entropy as a state function which was a function of u v n or s as a function of u comma x we see that these two have a very nice correspondence they not only have the properties that is satisfied by entropy but if we build in <coughs> if we start looking at the laws of thermodynamics then indeed this expression for entropy satisfies gives me all the laws of thermodynamics it gives me the zeroth law it gives me the first law it gives me the second law right so therefore <coughs> starting from a microscopic picture where we looked where we were initially interested in the microstates of the system xn we have built something which is very much consistent with thermodynamics that we did earlier the connection of course comes in from this probability density that takes you to the entropy <coughs> expression for the entropy ln omega e comma x divided by cn right so there is one thing uh, that i should point it out and i should note that while we considered the derivation of the zeroth law when we brought the two microcanonical systems together we only allowed an exchange of energy we did not allow any exchange of work there was no exchange of work this we did later on when we tried to when we derived the first law of this when we changed the coordinate so that 
over here when we change the coordinate from x plus delta x so that the energy now changes from e to e plus f dot delta x this you should keep it in mind